To download OBS, go to obsproject.com slash download, link in the description below, and you can select your platform, Windows, Mac, or Linux. Once you select your platform, go ahead and download the installer. Just like any other program you download on the internet, once it's downloaded, click it and run it and install it on your computer. It should launch OBS automatically. Welcome to your brand new copy of OBS. This big blank section here in the middle is your main working area where you will assemble different scenes and configurations that you want for your presentation or for your recording. You can add movie files here, you can add images, you can add browser sources from browsers like Google Chrome, you can add gameplay, you can add a camera. The possibilities are endless in this canvas. There are two different ways to add content to your canvas in OBS. One is to drag and drop a piece of content like an image or a movie here to the canvas. And the other is to click the plus button down here under sources in order to manually add it in a more complicated way. Let me show you the easy way first. Go grab a file on your computer, such as an image to test this out. Grab the file from your folder, drag it over the canvas and let go. Boom, there's an image right in OBS. It picks it up immediately. Another way to add an image source, for example, would be to click that plus button I told you about a moment ago, slide up to image, and then you can go get an image from your desktop computer. You go ahead and hit the browse button and you'll browse through your different folders on your computer until you find the image that you're looking for. There's my image and there it is right here in OBS. You may not want to show the exact same content for your entire live stream or recording, which is why there's the scenes option down here in the bottom left hand corner where you can program different scenes, which essentially is different configurations of sources and you can switch between them as you see fit. Check it out. Let's make an example. So scene one has this AWOL digital image. If we create another scene using the plus button right here, we'll just name it scene two for now. It's blank. We can put different content into this scene using one of the two methods we talked about a moment ago. Let me grab this cool image as an example. Boom, there's that piece of content. Now, when we go to scene one, it'll switch to the AWOL digital image. And when we go to scene two, it'll switch to this image. As you can see, the possibilities would be endless. It doesn't just have to be an image. It can be cameras, gameplay, videos, anything that you'd like. And you can program an endless number of scenes as you see fit, as you have other content that you want to share with your audiences. And you switch between the scenes right over here. It's not only about the visuals, of course, the audio is critical to any great recording or live streaming. And that's why the audio mixer is smack dab in the center of OBS right here. You can see all of your audio sources, how their volume levels are looking, and you can mute them in real time during your broadcast or recording. Here's a basic configuration. You click the plus button under sources. And the most common thing is people will wanna add their microphone, of course. Click audio input capture. It'll pull up this menu. You can rename it to whatever you'd like. Once you add this, hit okay. Then under device, go ahead and select whatever your microphone is on your computer, whether it's your webcam, your USB mic, whatever. Mine's my Rodecaster Pro Mixer. I'll hit okay. And as you can see, it pulled up that audio capture device right here. You can slide the volume down if you'd like to get that volume exactly where you want it to be. You can also hit this button right here to mute if you wanna kill that audio input. And you can click this cog right here to do a number of advanced options that I'll cover in another video. Generally speaking, you want your microphone to be somewhere here in the yellow, not crossing into the red like you see, and not in the green, it'll be too low. So if you drop your volume level down, have that yellow bar just going right about here and you'll have a nice clean audio signal from your microphone. Scene transitions are important because they allow you to cut between your different scenes and to make a smooth move from one piece of content to the other. And you can choose how this looks. Anything from fades to cuts to custom animations, it's all available here. Go ahead and click this up and down button right here. And the basic options are cut and fade. When you do cut, it'll automatically, when you click another scene over here, boom, just go straight to the scene, right? It's hard. It's a cut straight to that scene. If you do fade, it will slowly fade into the other scene and be a bit more of a smooth transition. I'm going to do an entire video on these because you can also add custom transitions such as swipes, slides, stingers with your own custom graphics, etc. 
The controls panel on the right is all of your essential controls that you need to start streaming, start recording, go into studio mode. We won't cover that today, but I will do an entire video about it. The settings, which we will go over, and of course, exit the program. Leave your controls here, generally speaking, when you're using OBS. These are essential ones that you'll use pretty much every single session. Remember those settings we talked about earlier? Down here, this is the most important menu in the entire program. You can also access settings by hitting File and Settings right up here. Let's dive into this menu, and I'll show you the important bits you need to know. I recommend starting on the Video tab as you're configuring your setup. The Canvas was that place I showed you earlier where you can drag and drop content to and you're looking at when you're configuring everything. That will probably start at your base resolution for your computer, 1920 by 1080 or whatever your resolution may be. Now your output resolution is different, as you can see in this case, from your Canvas resolution. How can that be possible? Well, the output resolution is what the final product is going to be in your recording or in your live stream. So, you can have your canvas be one resolution and you can output in a lower resolution if you choose to do so. Also, in this menu, you can choose the number of frames per second or FPS that you would like to use. If you're recording on your camera in 24, which is basically film, then go ahead and select 24 here in OBS so it matches that resolution. 30 FPS is generally the standard resolution that people use for tutorial videos, presentations, and webinars. And if you're a gamer, you're probably going to want to look at 60 FPS for that higher frame rate for smoother gameplay. Our next stop is going to be the audio tab, arguably just as important as video. There's two essential things you should know here. You're going to want to select whatever your desktop audio source is. If you're trying to capture any audio that's playing on your computer, most likely that'll be default for you. Perhaps it'll be your speakers. It depends on your particular configuration. Choose default when you're first getting started and see if that is what you're looking for. Under microphone, it's probably going to be default, but you'll want to manually select your microphone if you can see it here within this menu, and then you'll be sure that you're capturing your specific mic and not accidentally capturing some other device on your computer. After you're done setting up that audio, go straight to the output tab, where you will select the quality of your live stream and your recording and how you encode that so that you can choose the best way to balance that load on your computer because it can be quite taxing on your computer depending on your hardware. We're gonna keep this tutorial limited to simple mode. There is an advanced mode that goes way deeper into the details here, separate video on that. First things first, your video bitrate should not exceed your upload speed on your particular internet connection. So run a speed test on your internet connection and whatever that maximum upload speed is that you have, the consistent one that you see, take that and go minus 25% of whatever that speed is. That should be the maximum that you enter in this video bitrate field, okay? Go 25% below your standard upload speed at your house so you don't blow out your internet connection and have an unreliable stream. Next, you're gonna select your encoder. The encoder can be one of two options generally. The X264 encoder is the standard one that uses your CPU, your central processing unit, to process all of that data and turn it into video so people can watch it. Here's the deal with that though. That can add a significant load to your CPU down here and could blow it out depending on how powerful your processor is. So, if you have a dedicated graphics card on your computer, such as an NVIDIA card, you can choose the NVEC encoder, and that can take the load off of your CPU and put it right there on your graphics card instead, which is better equipped to encode video, of course. It is a graphics card. Next, you're going to select your audio bitrate. This is going to be determined largely by the platforms you're streaming on. The standard bitrate you're gonna to wanna to go for generally is 128. Every streaming platform accepts 128. Under your recording settings, you're going to select a number of very self-evident options. Your recording path is how you will select where your videos are saved. Browse and select a folder that you know where it's located. Generally, if you have a storage drive, I would recommend saving to a storage drive rather than the same drive as your system. Then, in terms of your recording quality, you have an important decision to make. You can either record in the same quality as the stream, 
which is the bit rate that you've listed up here and the audio bit rate you've listed here. Or you can choose any number of these options, which become more and more taxing as you go up. I highly recommend on mid-level computers going indistinguishable quality for your recording. Don't go lossless quality unless you feel like you really need every single pixel on the screen. I think indistinguishable quality is excellent for nearly every application, including even gameplay recordings. You select your recording format. My recommended format is MP4. You will get a warning message about MP4 down here at the bottom. I've never had any issues with the MP4 format, so I think that this warning message is not that relevant. The next setting you're going to want to choose is which encoder you're using for your recording. Once again, same as earlier, I recommend using the NVEC encoder if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, but use X264 if you do not have a dedicated card. Last in the settings menu, go to stream. It's really self-apparent how this works. You're going to select your service, which is going to be any number of streaming platforms that are out there. Twitch is the default, but it has darn near every streaming platform on the planet. You can click the show all button here and it'll show even more niche sites included. You just scroll down the list, select your site, and there's a number of different ways to add these different sites. They go between connecting your account, which is recommended, or you can use stream keys if you click that button. Stream keys basically requires you to take the key that's listed on the actual platform itself in a browser window you'll have separately, say over here, then you'll copy that and then you'll paste that stream key here into this field. As far as the server is concerned, you're going to want to select auto more times than not but if auto is giving you problems, let's say you're dropping frames, let's say you're having bitrate issues, then go ahead and select a server that is geographically as close to you as possible. Beginners, this last one is very, very important. I wanna teach you how to create a profile and a scene collection on day one. A lot of people don't do this. They end up putting every OBS project they ever make in the same default profile in the same scene collection. And if they ever change anything down here or change anything here or really change anything in the settings menu, it can screw everything else up forever. Don't do that. When you get started, create a profile that is specific to that particular project. Click the new button and name it whatever you want. I'll just name this one new just for fun. When you select that profile, all of the things that you have in your settings menu that we just went over a moment ago will be saved to that particular profile. So if you wanna do different settings for a different thing later, you can select a different profile for that. Then scene collection is a different type of save. We'll type new here for that. When you do a different scene collection, watch what happens. It gets rid of all of your scenes and it gets rid of all of your sources. So if you wanna save different settings, do a different profile. If you wanna do different scenes and different sources for different tasks that you're doing, then go ahead and create a different scene collection. I recommend creating a different profile and different scene collection for every project you're working on so that you don't lose progress over time. 